Good evening. Happy Thanksgiving. Thanks for coming out tonight as we t take a little time to say thank you to God for all of our blessings <clears throat> and count them one by one. Um, several, um, we all have several things to be thankful for this year, so um, we can keep those in mind. I have just a couple of things to tell you. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, you may have seen in the paper today, Honey Lou Boyum passed away. She was a member here forever ago. Um, she's been in bad health for as long as I've been here. Um, she's been in this center and that center and, you know, care facility and so forth. And then she <clears throat> seems to me she fell and broke a hip or something like that and ended up out at South Lake, which is where I caught up with her. And that was like five years ago. And then I lost track of her. And then I saw in the paper that she died last Thursday. So it's unfortunate um, that I, I was not able to keep up with her. But um, I tried. <clears throat> and with um, HIPAA and those sorts of things in place, I can't call the hospital or, or any care facility and say, hey, do you have a, because they can't tell me. Um, so anyhow, if you, if you remember Honey Lou, um, <clears throat> and I'm sure some of you do, I'm sure, sure Don, I'm sure you remember Honey Lou Boyum from back in the day, maybe, no, <laughs> oh, you can't hear me, that's okay. <clears throat> anyway, her service is going to be Monday at, out at Lincoln Memorial, they're going to do a visitation from 12 to 2, and then the service will be at 2 o'clock, so if you remember her and you want to go, that's, that's what's going on there. Um, on Sunday, this coming, we'll be doing the Hanging of the Greens right after church. So if, you can, if you're interested in helping out with that and can stick around, that would be awesome <clears throat> because there will be a lot of work to do um, to get the sanctuary ready for Christmas. Um, and we're doing really well with our 500 can challenge. We've already exceeded the 500. Um, we've exceeded the 1,000, so we're looking at 1,500. So if you have a few more things that you'd like to bring on Sunday... Sunday is the last day, right, Connie? Sunday is the last day will be the 30th. Okay. <clears throat> Super. So if you can get them here by the 30th, um, that would be tremendous. All right. That's all I've got for you this, this evening. Please stand as you're able, <clears throat> and we'll begin our worship with the call to worship. Welcome to the celebration. Welcome to worship. We come to give thanks and offer worship and praise. We are, we are the, the people, people of God, God gathered here to give thanks for the many blessings we enjoy each day. We come together to worship God, who is the giver of every gift and the source of every blessing. We, we will lift our voices in song. We will, we will listen to the good news, and we will respond to the love of God. God. <clears throat> Welcome to the celebration, which we begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We do not confess our sins in the hope of forgiveness. We confess our sins with the certainty of forgiveness. For the Apostle Paul assures us that we have been rescued from the power of darkness and transferred into the kingdom of God's beloved Son, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. And so, with that promise, that assurance, and that redemption, we confess our sins before God and one another. <clears throat> Holy God, we, we confess, confess that, that we have, have neglected, neglected to declare, declare Jesus, Jesus the King and model for our lives. lives. We, we have, have been, been quick, quick to, to call on others to follow the ways of Christ, Christ yet slow to, to do the same. same. We, we have, have been bold in demanding generosity, generosity mercy, and forgiveness, forgiveness yet, yet quiet, quiet when it comes to offering inclusion, inclusion love, and, and compassion. compassion. Forgive, Forgive us, O oh God. God. Restore, Restore in us yet again. again the commitment to be more Christ-like in word, in deed, and in spirit. Amen. All things in heaven and on earth are reconciled to God in Jesus Christ. 
Forgiveness is ours through faith in the Lord, in whom God was pleased to dwell. Friends, in the name of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Amen. Amen. Thanks be to God. Come, ye faithful people, come, raise the song of harvest home. All be safely gathered in, ere the winter storms begin. God our Maker doth provide for our wants to be supplied. Come to God's own temple, come, raise the song of harvest home. All the world is God's own field, fruit unto his praise to yield. Wheat and tares together sown, until joy our sorrow grown. First the blade and then the ear, then the full corn shall appear. God of harvest, grant that we wholesome grain and pure may be. For the Lord our God shall come and shall take his harvest home. From his field shall in that day all offenses purge away. Give the angels charge at last in the fire the tares to cast. But the fruitful is to store in his garner evermore. Even so, Lord, quickly come to thy final harvest home. Gather then thy people in, free from sorrow, free from sin. There forever purified in thy garner to abide. Come with all thine angels, come, raise a glorious harvest home. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord, our rock, our fortress, and our deliverer. Let us remember God's mercy, for the Lord is gracious and compassionate. We, we thank, thank you for, for calling us to faith in Christ, Christ for, for putting, putting your, your spirit within, within us, for giving us the mind of Christ, for, for gathering us as your church. church. We thank you, Lord, for extending your grace to us, for calling us to a life of gratitude, for calling us to service in your kingdom. Thanks, thanks be to God. God. Let us give thanks to the Lord, who satisfies the thirsty, who fills the hungry with good things, and who heals the afflicted. Let us celebrate the abundant goodness of God. We, we thank, thank you, gracious God, God that, that you provide for all our needs for the food on our tables, for the clothes on our bodies, for the beds we sleep in, and for the dwellings that shelter us. We praise you for all your gifts <clears throat> that go beyond our basic needs, for the things that make our work easier, for the conveniences of modern life, for the beauty and pleasure that you bring into our lives. We, we thank, thank you for the, the gift of, of work and, and the, the ability, ability to, to serve, serve others. Thank you for the loving relationships in our family or in our lives, for family and friends, for casual friendships and for deeper connections that we have with one another. We thank, we thank you, you for, for the, the gift, gift of relationships, relationships for, for affection, affection and, and connection, connection, 
and for the ways that you draw us into deeper relationship with you and with one another. Lord God, you have blessed us beyond measure. <clears throat> we cannot possibly name everything we are grateful for. We can only stop, take a moment on this night, and offer to you our humble thanks for all you have done for us and for all the ways that you bless us. Thank you, Lord. Help, Help us remember, remember that, that we, we have, have been blessed to be a blessing to others. For, for all these things, for Christ Jesus, and for so much more, we give you thanks. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Let us pray. Almighty God, your generous goodness comes to us new every day. By the work of your Spirit, lead us to acknowledge your goodness, give thanks for your benefits, and serve you in willing obedience. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Please be seated. The first reading for this evening is uh, from Joel chapter 2. Do not fear, O soil, be glad and rejoice, for the Lord has done great things. Do not fear, you animals of the field, for the pastures of the wilderness are green. The tree bears its fruit. The fig tree and vine give their full yield. O children of Zion, be glad and rejoice in the Lord your God. For he has given the early rain for your vindication. He has poured down for you abundant rain, the early and the later, later rain as before. The thrashing floors shall be full of grain. The vats shall overflow with wine and oil. I will repay you for the years that the swarming locust has eaten, the hopper, the destroyer, and the cutter, my great army which I sent against you. You shall eat in plenty and be satisfied and praise the name of the Lord your God who has dwelt wondrously with you and my people shall never again be put to shame you shall know that I am in the midst of Israel and that I the Lord am your God and there is no other and my people shall never again be put to shame word of God word of life please read responsive with me Psalm 126 when the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, we were like those who dream. Then and our, our mouth was filled, filled with laughter, and our tongue with shouts of joy. Then it was, was said among, among the nations, The Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us, and we rejoiced. Restore, Restore our, our fortunes, O Lord, Lord like, like the water courses in the Negev. May those who sow in tears reap with shouts of joy. Those, those who, who go out weeping, bearing the seed for sowing, shall come, come home with shouts of joy, carrying their sheaves. is from the sixth chapter of Matthew. Jesus said, Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat, or what you will drink, or about your body, and what you will wear. Is not life more than food, and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow, nor reap, nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? And can any of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your span of life? And why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. And yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not clothed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which is alive today and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? 
Therefore, do not worry, saying, what will we eat, or what will we drink, or what will we wear? For it is the Gentiles who strive for all these things, and indeed your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. But strive first for the kingdom of God and for his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. On the recommendation of a friend of mine, I recently acquired this book. It's called Yes Yes And by Father Richard Rohr. Now, even though Richard Rohr is a Catholic and a Franciscan monk, this both and thinking is really rather quite Lutheran. We are not an either or people, we are a both and people. And if you don't know Richard Rohr, if you don't know his writing and his work, um, I highly recommend him to you. He's, he's really quite delightful to read. He's an amazing thinker. He's a modern day mystic. And when you put those two things together, it makes him really rather fascinating to, to read. <clears throat> there are some days that I am just completely astounded by what he has to say. And then there's other days that his thinking are, is so deep, I have no idea what he's talking about. But that's okay. This book is a book of daily devotions. And so it's, it's just small little chunks of wisdom to chew on, which is just about the right speed for me. And here are just a few of the words that I read the other night, right before I went to sleep. God always entices through love. You were probably taught that God would love you if and when you changed. In fact, God loves you so that you can change. What an astounding thought. Many of us were taught that we had to change or repent first. If we changed or repented, then God would forgive. If we changed or repented, then God would love. And it's only after we do those things that we are promised to receive God's mercy and grace. Well, The problem with this way of thinking is that if if God's forgiveness is conditional upon our confession, then that makes forgiveness a work. And it makes it a reward for the work of repentance and not the free gift of grace that God promises that it is. And after all, being saved by grace through faith is the cornerstone of our faith. That is what we stand on as Lutheran Christians. So if that's true, that means that what Richard Rohr is saying is also true. He just might be right about this. And what if he is? What if God always moves toward us? What if God really is the one who instigates relationship. And what if he's right, what Richard Rohr says, what if he's right that God entices us with love? And if God loves and forgives and accepts us exactly as we are, with all of our bumps and all of our bruises and all of our imperfections, all of our mess, all of our sinfulness, and if God's all-encompassing and overwhelming love comes to us freely, that is, that we cannot earn it and we don't deserve it, then doesn't that mean that our only response then is to, our only option, I should say, is to live in response to it? In other words, if God loves us so utterly and completely, how can we not be changed as a result? seems kind of backwards, right? It seems like we should confess first, and then, then God will forgive. But if God forgives first, and we respond to the gift, 
of forgiveness, then that puts the responsibility of forgiveness where it actually belongs, with God. Forgiveness of our sins is not up to us. It's up to God. And we don't have to worry or wonder if God's going to forgive us for this or that or the other thing because God already has. God was there when we did whatever it was that we're confessing. God knows. We're not telling God anything new. We're just owning up to it to say, hey, I screwed up. But the good news is that it's already done. Forgiveness for our sins was complete in Christ's death on the cross and in his resurrection on the third day. This is the magnitude and the breadth and the depth and the scandal of God's amazing grace. And no, it doesn't make any sense to us because most of us don't operate this way. We can only be grateful for this grace and then learn to live in response to it. Which means that, yes, absolutely, it is good for us to confess and to repent when we mess up. Confession is good for the soul. And it is also good to forgive others because God has already forgiven us. And because of God's goodness to us, it also means that we are to love and to serve our neighbor, especially those who are in need. Maybe that's why Jesus tells us tonight not to worry. Because he's got this. We don't have to worry about anything. We don't have to worry about our life. We don't have to worry about food or clothing. We don't even have to worry about our sins. Because really, does worrying about anything ever help? No, not really. And Jesus even said in the scripture tonight, Can we add a single hour to our lives by worrying? No, not at all. If we could get past our anxieties, we'd all be a lot better off. And thankfully, Jesus tells us exactly how we can do that. Instead of focusing so much on ourselves and our troubles and those things that tend to keep us up at night, first, we are to seek the kingdom of God and God's righteousness. And when we do, we'll find out that we have everything that we need. Now, this is all well and good for those of us who have plenty to eat, for those of us who have clean clothes on our backs and we have a safe and soft place to sleep at night. But isn't that exactly the point? We who do have plenty whose lives have been transformed by this incredible grace and this love of God that has been shown to us in Christ Jesus, we believe that we have been set free from our sins and are now free to serve others. That means we can afford to be generous with with what we have and we can afford to support this food challenge that we've got going up here this month. And it's really going quite well. We can afford to put a couple of bucks in the offering basket tonight to go to Matt Talbot Kitchen. It means that we can afford to share our time and our talents as we serve others and those in need. One, One wonderful example that I ran across this weekend, I was cruising through my Facebook page on Sunday night and I noticed that one of our members had spent their entire Sunday down at the mission baking pies for Thanksgiving Day dinner tomorrow. How wonderful is that? I checked in with them this afternoon. They and their friends made 45 pies on Sunday. It's great. How wonderful. But see, it's these kinds of things that this is exactly what life with Jesus is supposed to compel us to do. Donating time or skill to making pies may not seem like ministry, but it is. Because imagine what a gift it's going to be to the people who come to dinner tomorrow to be able to enjoy a piece of homemade pie. How great will that be? Or think about, oops, that's the, that's the pie. Or think about the, the hours that are spent in the food pantry 
packing boxes for people who are hungry. What is a box of food going to mean to someone tomorrow who, who is hungry and wouldn't otherwise have anything to eat? Or think about families who have received a backpack today that came out of this place. Just imagine what it feels like to know that a backpack has come home to help tide things over, over the weekend. We rarely get to see firsthand the impact that our time and our talents make on the lives of other people. But that impact is all possible because of the kindness of good Christian folk who feel compelled to serve out of a gratitude for all that God has done for them. Therefore, Jesus says, because of God's great mercy and grace, we have nothing to worry about. Do not worry about your life or what to eat or drink or wear. Don't worry about your sins either because they're already taken care of. They're, it's done. Don't worry about being worthy. Don't worry about being good enough because you know what? We're just not. We're not worthy. But the good news is that we don't have to be. Instead, we fall on our knees and we fall fully on the mercy of God in Christ Jesus, whose life, death, and resurrection, resurrection does make us good enough. We give thanks for God's generosity of forgiveness and acceptance. God loves us so much. God already decided years ago that we are worth dying for. God entices us with love. And it is the very least we can do to live our lives in response to that great love by serving others and seeking the kingdom of God first above anything else. Because when we do, we discover that what we have is more than enough. And maybe more importantly, we, we discover that in Jesus, we are more than enough. And we have more than enough. And we are called to share that enoughness with others. Amen. stand as you are able. We are God's people by baptism into Christ. Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, 
who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. Let us join our hearts and our minds together in prayer. Holy God, thank you for this day and for this time to gather us together to express our gratitude to you for all our blessings. We are most especially grateful, Lord, for the way that you love us, that you love us freely and unconditionally, that you love us even when we mess up, that you entice us with this great love and change us and help us to do better. Thank you for the ways you call us to serve others out of that great love. We pray that you bless our efforts so that others may experience your love too. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, you give all people a place at your table. Nourish and encourage campus ministries, new congregations, and workplace chaplaincies. Support all parts of the church that meet people where they are and offer accompaniment through daily challenges and joys. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You give nourishment to the birds of the air and the lilies of the field. Support all creatures who rely on the earth for sustenance. Water parched ground, dry flooded fields, temper heat waves and frosts, and give sunlight and shade. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, you give wisdom to your people. Enlighten all leaders. Inspire and guide President Biden, Governor Ricketts, our local leaders, and all who represent us in our government. Give them patience and perspective to choose wisely for the common good of all people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, you give nourishment to those who hunger. Bring poverty and food insecurity to an end. Give dignity and adequate employment to those who are unemployed or underemployed. Sustain us all with your, at your welcoming banquet of love and justice. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, you give community to those who are lonely. Be with our biological families, our chosen families, and our church family as we gather for the Thanksgiving holiday. Send your compassionate presence to those who are lonely, those who are separated or estranged from their families, and those whose loved ones are now with you and for whom this is the first Thanksgiving without them at their table. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, you give a feast of endless thanksgiving. We are grateful for the saints gathered at your table who have gone before us, especially Cindy McCune, Janet Emmons, Lucille Schmidt, Gloria Larson, Betty Velasic, Lois Johnsgard, and Honey Lou Boyum. Unite us with them whenever we give thanks to you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, your welcome is wider than we can imagine. Receive our prayers for the sake of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us. Amen. This is my father's world, and to my listening ears, all nature sings and round me rings the music of the spheres. This is my father's world, I rest me in the thought of rocks 
centuries of skies and seas is and the wonders wrought. This is my Father's world, the birds, the carols raise, the morning light, the lily white, declare their Maker's praise. This is my Father's world, He shines in all that's fair. In the rustling grass I hear him pass, he speaks to me everywhere. This is my Father's world, oh let me ne'er forget that though the wrong seems off so strong, God is the ruler yet. This is my Father's world, why should my heart be sad? The Lord is King, let heaven ring, God reigns, let earth be glad. Please stand as you are able. Creator of the cosmos, breath of heaven, lover of us all, you are our praise, our life, our joy. You are there through desert wanderings and willful murmurings, rebellious running, running and tears of complaint. You are there when sorrow becomes our daily food. You rescue us from ruin and anoint us with blessing. You are there in stable and temple, river and hillside, cross and tomb, and even beyond the grave. Rising sun, soaring spirit, radiant Lord, you are there in shining glory, overcoming death and welcoming us to life. You meet us in the breaking of bread. You pour out the wine of salvation. You feed us with grace and overwhelm us with love. On the night before he died, our Lord Jesus took bread, he gave thanks, and he broke it. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup, he gave thanks, and he gave it to them all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. By your spirit, make these gifts your body and blood. By your spirit, make Amen. us one Amen. with you Amen. and with Amen. each other. By your spirit, make us strong that we might share your love with your blessed and broken world. Fount of mercy, fire of justice, dearest friend, bind us to you and send us out to seek and serve and sing your praise until you gather us up in glory and bright unending song. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. This is God's table and everyone is welcome here. So come, you who have great faith and you who wish you had more. Come, you who have been here often and you who have not been for a long time. Come, you who have tried to follow and you who have fallen short. Come, not because I invite you, but because God desires to meet you here. And for those who are celebrating at home, please know that you are part of this table and this meal. This is the body of Christ given for you and the blood of Christ shed for you. The congregation may be seated.
stand as you are able. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ give us strength for today and hope for tomorrow. Amen. Blessed Jesus, at this table you have been for us both host and meal. Now send us forth to extend our tables and to share your gifts until that day when all feast together at your heavenly banquet. Amen. God, the beginning and the end, who has written our names in the book of life, bless us and keep us in grace and peace from this time forth and forevermore. Amen. For the beauty of the earth, for the beauty of the skies, for the love which from our birth over and around us lies. Christ our King, to Thee we raise this our sacrifice of praise. For the wonder of each hour and the and of the night hill and vale and tree and flower sun and moon and stars of light christ our god to thee we raise this our sacrifice of praise for the joy of here and i for the heart and mind's delight, for the mystic harmony, linking sense to sound and sight. Christ our God, to Thee we raise this our sacrifice of praise. For the joy of human love, Brother, sister, parent, child, friends on earth and friends above, for all gentle thoughts and mild. Christ our God, to thee we raise this our sacrifice of praise. For each perfect gift of thine, 
peace on earth and joy in heaven for thyself best gift divine to our world so freely given christ our god to thee we raise this our sacrifice of praise god from whom all blessings flow praise, praise god, god all, all creatures, creatures here below, below. Praise God above, you heavenly host. Praise, Praise Father, Father, Son, and Holy, Holy Ghost. Ghost. Let us go in peace with praise and thanksgiving for all the blessings of our God. We, we go, go with, with grateful, grateful hearts, reaching out, sharing grace. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. 